So, my name's Ollie Whitehouse, I'm CTO for NCC Group. Yes, I'm Des Brown, I am the chair of the European Leadership Network, and we've just both come from a really interesting breakfast conversation about artificial intelligence, its challenges, its opportunities, and its risks, but in particular, you know, what's in this for Europe. I think that's here and now, right? You know, we realise that the productivity gains it gives us, the ability to defend, and ultimately in the future, the ability to potentially kind of prosecute our aggressors is there. And so people, you know, as we went through the jet engine age, arguably artificial intelligence is one of the kind of the te great technological evolutions for the, for the computer age. Because you know, history shows us repeatedly that an older generation exposed to a new innovation barely grasps it, let alone understands the long-term repercussions of it. And so they will look back at us with a, a degree of disdain, as all future generations generally do with their kind of their, their, their grandparents, and will think that we made horrendous mistakes at the time and we missed opportunities to avert various crises that were inevitably, inevitably kind of pop up. I think one of the interesting things and one of the dimensions that we have to consider, though is that this is probably the first time in our history where we have companies with users with which with user bases larger than most countries have citizens and so what is the weight that they can bring to bear on policy formation um, by virtue of that through their lobbying activities when they have the insights that we don't necessarily have. we look at policy formation legislation formation it's generally by an older generation if we engage early and ensure that we have diversity across race, community and more important generations as we look to formulate these we can understand the concerns of tomorrow are represented in anything that we pass today and that could be you know that could be quite a seismic shift as to how we approach this entire problem set. Well, I think we have to take a longer term view. We have to understand that this is a bold generation that has grown up with that approach and so hasn't realised the repercussions. So there's an element of the danger of old people thinking that they can protect future generations from themselves. But we have to see that actually over the course of maybe the next five to ten years, do we see again an attitude shift there? Because there is a point where arguably big businesses have profited from the data of the citizen we can expect future economic models where I will be able to directly benefit rather than data for service, which is the kind of the mutual value exchange that happens now. Why can I not monetize my data? Why can I not own it and decide who gets access to it at what price? And I can decide to mix it in the pool or not. We have to expect those kind of privacy enhancing economies to come to the fore. And so I wouldn't base it purely on the subset of kind of the millennial generation or the one that followed subsequent. I think, you know, Keep, a, keep a, a, an open framework that's able to cater for a slightly more conservative approach where people want to take back a degree of control. So, well, I mean, I've got a kind of answer to that which may sound a bit cheeky, but it's the, real, the reality. I mean, I'm not going to get my Amazon Prime mm -hmm. parcel eight hours later yes. if I don't take the box. Yes. You know, if I read all these conditions before I take the box and understand them, the eight hours will be up. Yes. You know, so it doesn't seem to be to matter what age you are, you're going to take the box. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? But what, you, what you're supposing there is a society which is based on consumerism and now, where actually what we see some of the environmental debates where people will probably be willing to take certain sacrifices in for the safety and the security and the long-term pr preservation of the globe. You know, we're seeing that upswell of that, you know, not even kind of post-school at the moment really fighting the environmental cause. So yes, based on the sample set of today's consumers, not tomorrow's, I would suggest. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.